Hello everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snaps here, where we'll be discussing the Saw franchise for you guys in a very blunt way. I'm your host, Stephen Harold, And I am Justin Harold. And in today's video, we're going to be giving you guys our review for Saw 3. Released in 2006, directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman. So for the story for this movie, um, of course, uh, John Kramer, Jigsaw, is basically really on death's door. Uh, he is basically bedridden in this movie, and we notice that he has captured a brain surgeon, right? Yeah. Yeah, a brain surgeon to give her a test while also testing another person. Um, and also, we do see Amanda, who is becoming a little bit more unhinged. And we do find out some crazy shit about her when it came to the traps. Now, when it comes to this story, I feel like when it comes to, like, if this was a trilogy, it could have wrapped up very well. Well, that was, that's the thing. Saw 3 originally was intended to be just a trilogy. Yeah. And they were planning to have this be the final one. Which but, explains a certain thing that happens at the end of the movie. But based on how successful Saw 3 ended up doing in theaters, especially because of the twist and everything, uh, demand was still high, even with the ending. So they decided to keep making more of the films. I'm not complaining. It's just if we're talking in terms of how the rest of the film's stories progress, no. technically this would have been better if... You just did a trilogy, but I'm not complaining. No, I'm not complaining either. I mean, like, we it gave us seven years of Saw. Seven years straight of Saw. And, like, the last time any franchise ever did such a thing like that was Friday the 13th. Yeah. Which was in the 80s. Well, Friday the 13th and then Nightmare on Elm Street. But Friday the 13th was a consistent, like, eight films in a span of ten years. From 1980 to 1989. So why don't we talk about the story for this one? Um, going into it with just the base, the basic. Uh, how did you feel about the story in the, this film? Well, the story for me, when, when it comes to this one, it, it's like, okay, it kind of almost wraps up in a nice, pretty bow, to say the least. But at the same time, I kind of feel like there should have never been a twist if this was supposed to be meant to be a trilogy, yeah, and that was it. But, of course, I guess execs had something to say where they're like, no, we have to have a twist. And that, like, like the story itself, I, I don't have too much of a problem with it. I mean, like, I'm glad that we did get more films. But I feel like this was the film that was, like, the catalyst for the decline of Saw. Okay, that's a fair point. Um, I personally did enjoy the story. I don't think it's better than Saw 2. Mm -hmm. so in terms of the predecessor, I don't, I think this is actually weaker. Having said that, uh, I still feel like this is the best Saw movie in terms of traps, for one. One of my all-time favorite traps happens to be in Saw 3. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in the traps department because this movie had top-notch traps oh they the gore factor was like dialed up to 11 yeah i can agree with that in terms of characters i mean tobin bell is fantastic as usual uh he's even though he's bedridden in this movie yeah he's an older version he's bedridden he's basically knocking on death's door still effective still has that demeanor in his voice where he's... he still sets a presence yeah. even though he's dying oh 100 percent. yeah like nothing about him has changed so i think he's still top notch in that department uh shawnee smith who plays amanda young uh i actually i think i like her a teeny i don't know if i like her more in this one than in saw two Maybe the same, but well, in Saw Two, you you didn't know she was part of being ju uh, Jigsaw's accomplice. No, but just everything about her being part of the game in general, and just her acting ability in Saw Two. No. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's uh, no. I think I would say she she's as good in this one. Okay. I feel like I'm now just nitpicking for the sake. Okay. 
for me, when it comes to Shawnee Smith's performance in this one, it's just like, okay, she plays more unhinged. Um, now, it's a good thing, too, because basically what she doesn't know is that she's being tested. Yeah. And she's trying to just keep her cool. It's basically like the same thing with Eric Matthews is like, you know, he didn't know he was actually being tested and time was on his side. Amanda, it's the polar opposite. Where it's, you know, you just have to keep your cool. Yeah. And maybe you can be in a conflict. But she, she's not listening, though. No, she's not listening. And, of course, when we do get to the traps, we'll explain why she was basically a flawed accomplice. Oh, yeah. Very flawed. Um, when it comes to the other characters like uh, Lynn Denlin. Um, Jeff. Jeff. And the other side characters who are part of the traps, it, it's like. Now, when I watched this movie, basically, I had a hard time watching Jeff go through what he was going through. But now being a dad, there is a scene that made me kind of tear up. So you have a different perspective now. I have a different because perspective you're a now. Yeah, because I'm a father. And I do like his performance in this movie. I do like uh, Lynn's performance where basically she is hopped up on medication. Uh, um, antidepressant medication. Yeah. And both their character traits are very well done. And I do like them very much. And even the side characters, for as little as we see them, not it's bad for acting. Just, it's mostly just to see them in the trap. That's yeah. what it is. And what did you think of them? Good. I mean, they all do their job effectively. Acting wise, I don't have a single flaw with any of them. I mean, it's not saw acting. No. So, no complaints in that department. But it's still not as good as saw two when it comes to acting. Or maybe it's kind of like on the same level. Maybe I, slightly you know lower. What? It's. I actually kind of like Jeff's acting better than Lynn. I yeah. Don't, I don't know what it is about Lynn. I just don't like the character. It might be because she's a cheating wife, therefore I think she's a bitch. But yeah, the cheating wife, and she's just like, z like zoned out half the fucking like half the time when that's John. What, that's what antidepressants do. Yeah, do. like she like John's talking to her, and she's just like, you know, like looking off, and he like there's that scene like he's just like look at me, and I'm like yeah, I'd I'd fucking be pissed too. Yeah, I'd definitely. Be so when it comes to the traps of this movie, um, we do have to pretty much talk about. Uh, the differences in certain traps because we have traps that Jigsaw had designed and we have traps that Amanda designed. Yeah. Amanda's is not quite as simple because they're not winnable. Like, the classroom trap, that guy is chained to shit and he's even got a chain in his jaw and he has 60 seconds to rip them all out. Well, how can you rip out the jaw part and, like they even say in the movie, the door was welded shut. So it didn't matter. Yeah, it, he was fucked from the start. Yeah. But of course, then we have the most obvious trap that is not fucking winnable at all, is the angel trap. Yeah. Now, you have an interesting fact that I didn't notice at the time. No. When we, uh, so when we went to see this in theaters, uh, ironically, it was the angel trap that made me feel lightheaded and dizzy. I guess at the time, I... Couldn't handle that trap. Yeah, and it was is, the it was the is, first one we saw in theaters. Which is funny because compared to the other traps in the film, that is not that bad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like it, it's not that bad, but I mean, like the just the factor of like yeah. she had a lot of obstacles against her. Like she had to dump her hand in a jar of acid to retrieve a key. Now she unlocks the thing, but like I even mentioned it to you. The thing is hooked to her ribcage, so how can she get out? The thing is, that trap has a flaw to it already. Because in the videotape, it, it mentions in a matter of seconds, the key will dissolve. By the time the videotape's over, it's been like 30 seconds. The key should have been dissolved, and the lock should have never been oh, yeah, fair enough. So I had an issue with that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and then, of course... There's now all the jigsaw traps. Now, the traps that uh, Jeff encounters, of course, we have the freezer trap. I want to call it, I think it's the freezer trap. Yeah. Where he basically has to sit 
save her. And see, the thing about Jeff is basically his son died and he blames a lot of people. He's full of vengeance, yeah. full of revenge. And this girl is basically oh, the only witness. And she fucked off. Like mm -hmm. she just left. So she is hanging there in the bath in a freezer, getting cold water sprayed on her, and she's fucking naked. So she's gonna die by freezing to death. Yeah. What'd you think of that trap? Fine. It was it was a fine trap. I mean it's it's not graphic, it's not anything bad, but I think they wanted to show something different and at the time it's like, hey, it's a saw movie and we haven't shown boobies. <laughs> Let's show boobs. The same Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> we need more boobs in this movie. <laughs> Okay. Let's do a saw trap with tits. Okay, yeah. perfect. Here you go. Here's tits and bush. Thing. Yeah, tits and bush. Uh, and then we got the 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 trap that fucking brought a tear to my eye, which is that fucking uh vat trap, the, the the pig trap. Yeah. Where we see the judge who basically did not sentence him to life in prison or whatever like that. The guy who killed his son, and he is it's. Go ahead. It's a very disgusting trap. I mean, yeah, you're drowning in basically rotten pig guts. Yeah, it's disgusting. That's Even just the gross. smell of it should have fucking killed you. Like, oh fuck, I I would have, oh I would have been throwing up the whole time. But the scene that made me cry is tear up basically is um, when he has to burn his son's personal possessions, and I'm like, I wouldn't have done that, man. Yeah, just to get the key. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. no, I wouldn't have done that. But then, of course, we head to what you've said, and I know a lot of people say this is, like, top five, like, top tier traps. I'm going to let you talk about this This one. is my number one of all time. Uh, it's called The Rack. Uh, my personal favorite, because never have I ever seen a trap where your arms go 360 degrees, followed by your legs, and then your neck. When I saw that, I was like, this is so fucking gross, but I love it. This one gives me PTSD, too, because it's basically like, <laughs> when I was a kid, I put my arm in the dryer, and my arm broke, because uh, it got twisted, so when I saw the arm twisting, I was like, oh! Hey, whose fault was that, by the way? It was my own fucking yeah. fault. Yeah, but yeah, you blame other people. <laughs> there you go. Um... I personally think that, yeah, the rack is definitely a top five trap. I know a lot of people love that trap, too. Yeah. Um, and then, like, there's also the collar. The collar trap. Which Amanda built. Yeah. But you could still get out of it. So she didn't rig that one. No, it wasn't rigged. All, all she had to do was basically just let her out. Yeah. But she just refused. She refused, yeah. Yeah. Because she was unhinged. Mm-hmm. She, she was, at this rate, like, like even tell, telling John, like, no, no one ever gets better. They don't change. Yeah. So when it comes to the, the, the traps in this movie, even without the rack, you could say the traps are on par. Like, a lot of people will say when in the top tier list. I would still say, if you take away the rack, this is still better than Saw 2. For traps. Yes. Really? Oh, if, fuck. If, okay. if I take away the rack, this is still better than Saw 2, because I told you in the previous video, I don't look at Saw 2 for the trap. Oh, I yeah, that's true, set. yeah. I look at the house. Yeah. You look at the house and the, the characters and everything, yeah. and then just that interrogate, the interaction between Matthews and yeah. John Kramer. Yeah. Like, the setting of the game is what is the big thing for me, whereas Saw 3, it's the traps. Yeah, that's true. So when it comes to the twist of this movie, we have the knowledge that Amanda was being tested the whole time because John already knows that all of her traps were unwinnable. Yeah. So he was testing her and of course she failed. And then we find out the other t twist, which is basically Lynn and Jeff were married. Yeah. Husband and wife. And which I feel like that was a weak twist. I mean, I get why they did it, because it was meant to make sure Amanda didn't fuck up. 
Because if she had that information, then she wouldn't be so inclined to, like, protect, uh, protect Flynn. Remember, she's blackmailed, which we don't know about. No. Until later Saw films. Yeah. But when it comes to the ending of this movie, this is, of course, the one thing that a lot of people will say is the highly most controversial thing, controversial decision to make in the Saw franchise is kill your main character off in the third film. Killing off John Kramer. See, though, by that time, though, we assumed this was it for Saw. Yeah. We assumed it, yeah. I was like, okay, that's it. And... To find out, nope. No. Because, like, what was it, like, February of the next year, there was announced Saw 4. Yeah. Which, now we know what that is. So, Saw's 1 to 3 is considered the Jigsaw saga. Okay. Whereas, technically, Jigsaw Amanda saga. Whereas, Saw's 4 to final chapter is called the Hoffman saga. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay. So, that makes sense, Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, spoiler alert, uh, Detective Hoffman, which we barely see in this movie. Yep. Yeah, he's going to be... The next accomplice. Yeah. Which, you knew that the studio shot themselves in the foot, like, oh, we need another fucking accomplice. Yeah. Let's make Hoffman. It's like, the guy who barely got any screen time in three. We'll, we'll get there when we get there, but... It was one of my uh, least favorite things about uh, that film. Yeah, it's looking back now, it's like this was a bad decision. Yeah. Because now you had to rely on flashbacks to get a ton, Tobin Bell in there. A ton. A shit ton of them. And a shit ton of transition shots. Daryl and Bellsman, you got stuff with transition shots. You did some that were good, but. But in the next movie review, we're going to talk about one that I fucking don't like. Uh, you have two, actually. Oh, yeah, there's one two in I don't particular. like. It's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. And now this is where we... So, what is your final thoughts on Saw 3 as a whole? I really enjoy Saw 3. It's not better than 2. Mm-hmm. I do think it's on par with the first Saw. Um... Looking back at it, I am glad I rewatched it. That way, I have a lot more information. Yeah, because it's surprising, like how much info I totally missed out on. As a whole, though, I would give this a seven out of ten. Basically, the same as the first saw. Okay. Where so it's saw is seven, saw two is eight, and then saw three is seven. Yeah. Okay. That's how I would give this. Okay. So I didn't mind the whole aspect of the trap. Like the traps worked great. The character, uh, the characters, all good. I didn't like the fact that the movie decided to kill off John, especially a weak death too. Yeah. Like, oh, and we never even got to talk about the brains, the backdoor brain surgery that we see, which is fucking gross. So let, let me ask you uh, this. Uh, the fact that um, you teared up because you're a father and everything. Yeah. Does that change your review at all? Or does it not? No, because I even said the same things back when I yeah. had watched this movie. Like, it was just like, yeah, I would have gave this this rating. Okay. Um, nothing has changed. But, of course, a lot more things now being refreshed in my mind. It was like. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, all this still is there. When it comes to the gore, this movie delivers. The traps, this movie delivers. Of course, like if I had to say pinpoint what's my favorite trap in this movie, it's the rack. I have to say it, like, for sure. I agree with you on that. But when it comes to killing off John Kramer and one of the twists being basically like, okay, well, you guys could have done something better there. Um, Were you fine with them killing off Amanda? Uh, at the time, yeah, I was fine with them killing her off. At the time. At the time. But now talking to Shawnee Smith and how much she loves the Saw franchise, I was just like, I wish they didn't kill you off now. <laughs> yeah, like, growing up, I was like, fuck, I wish they didn't kill her off. Fuck. So if I was to give this movie a rating, it's still going to be the same as I would have gave it back in the day, which is definitely a 6 out of 10. 
six out of ten. Okay. Yeah, so that's fine. That's my rating. So I give Saw three a six out of ten, and Justin gives Saw three a seven out of ten. Yeah. Despite my love for Saw, next we're going to talk about the slow decline of the franchise. Uh, the next film has its ups and downs and plenty of transitions. Yeah, a ton of them. So, <laughs> fuck. So, watch out for Saw 4's review, guys. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you can get notified about all the other videos, especially the Saw franchise, coming out on the channel. Now, next up, we will be talking about Saw 4. And... We kind of have, I think, the same things to say when it comes to Saw I think, 4. I think we have on uh, agreement with the, yeah, the next one. The same page. Definitely for sure. Yeah. So anyways, guys, that's it from us. So I've been your host, Stephen Harold, And this is Justin Harold, And we will talk to you guys later. And always remember, live or die, make your choice.